In this final segment on OpenGL, we will be talking about texture mapping. We will add a texture of wood to the wooden floor in order to make the MyTest demo more interesting. This segment will correspond to the MyTest 3 program. Let me first show you a demo. Here I see that the only change is that the floor, instead of being white, now has a wood texture with it, and I can toggle the texture on and off using the T key. I've defined a bunch of globals to set up the texture. Wood texture is a 256 by 256 RGB texture map. I have a texture buffer, which is given by text names. Is text is a parameter for texturing. Is light similarly for lighting? And I have these texturing and lighting flags to turn on and off texturing and lighting. In the display routine, I initially set is light to zero to turn off lighting, except we'll turn it on later for the teapot. I set the is text flag to texturing, and I draw texture. So instead of just drawing an object or drawing with color for the cubes, I draw with texture the floor and I provide it the texture name zero, which is the texture buffer. Finally, I set is text to zero to ensure that other items are not textured. The keyboard has some simple toggles most notably T for turning on and off texturing. After this, I have to queue up the display routine and blood post redisplay. S turns on and off shading, which we'll not be talking about here, but you can experiment with it in the program. Let me show you the demo again, and I can just turn T on and off. Notice that I can do everything else. I can zoom in, zoom out. Let's back up a level and talk about the idea of texture mapping. This really is one of the great inventions in computer graphics. For motivation, consider the geometry of this dinosaur shown here, and you want to be able to create an image of it with a realistic colors on it, which will be done by taking this texture on the right and wrapping it on the dinosaur. Now, if I had to do this in a geometric way, I would have to make very small polygons, each of which is colored with the correct texture map element. And I would have to have a huge amount of geometry to represent the dinosaur. This would slow down my 3D graphics rendering. However, with texture mapping, I can represent the 3D geometry at a relatively coarse scale, but I'm now adding detail in an image-based way, having an image which encodes the fine scale texture detail. And in this way, I can still get by with coarse geometry. Texture mapping is a very important topic in practical computer graphics in almost any application. Almost all of the objects will end up being texture mapped. In the real world, essentially all objects have some kind of texture to them, whether it's wood grain, whether it's the face texture, whether it is bricks. And this adds a level of image-based visual detail to scenes, which can make scenes look much more complicated and interesting, even if the geometry of the scene is very simple. It can be added in a fragment shader, and you can see in the left and right images here the greater realism of the scene once you've added the appropriate texture maps. Let's talk about setting up the texture. So we call this init texture function. This function just reads in a portable pixel map or PPM file. PPM files are not very common nowadays, so you can replace this with an image read for your favorite file format if you want. But let me just explain it. You take in a pointer to the file name and the program corresponding to the shader program. This is just old style C code for reading a file. FP is the file pointer. And the PPM format it has starts with a line which usually says P6. Then it has the width and height of the file. 
and then it has the maximum character value which is 255 usually and a new line. So we're just skipping this initial part of it and then it just has the colors where each of the RGB colors is a single character in English reading order from left to right and I'm just reading that into this wood texture. In order to do texture mapping, each vertex must have a texture coordinate. We saw this earlier, in fact, if you remember when we defined the floor, that we had the floor and we had texture coordinates from the floor ranging from 0, 0 to 1, 1. But each vertex in the general case must have a texture coordinate associated with it. When you interpolate or rasterize the vertices in OpenGL, it interpolates these texture coordinates to get a texture coordinate for each pixel, which will then be used to look up into the texture. So the first part of this is setting up the texture coordinates. So UGL gen textures just sets up uh, one buffer for text names. You bind the vertex array corresponding to the vertex array objects for the floor. You bind the buffer and this will be the buffers, num objects, times num per object plus num color. So you're adding a buffer corresponding to the uh, texture information. And the information on the buffer data there corresponds to the floor text, which is the information regarding the floor texture. It's the buffer data is stored in the same way as you done vertices and colors. Remember that we use layout 0 for the vertices and layout 1 for the colors. We are now going to use layout location 2 for the texture coordinates. So you enable the vertex attribute array 2. You set the vertex attribute pointer. And now notice that you have only two elements, which are the S and T coordinates for the texture. You also need to define an active texture, which is texture 0 in this case. You need to enable texturing, and you need to bind to GL texture to the these text name 0. All of this setup is needed to be able to use the textures. The next part of this is specifying the texture image. And this is a command GL text image 2D, which takes in a number of different arguments. The target is just GL texture 2D. In principle, you could have more interesting versions like texture 3D and 4D, but we are just sticking with standard textures 2D. Level is relevant for mid mapping, which we are not really getting to in this course, so it's almost always going to be zero. The number of components is three for RGB, it would be four for RGBA. Width and height must be a power of two if you want things to work more simply. Border is usually set to zero. The format will be GLRGB or GLRGBA. And then the type is what is the type of input data. In our case, it's GL unsigned byte, but it could also be GL float, etc. So we define the GL texture image 2D command with GL texture 2D, zero GLRGB, the width and height of our textures 256, 256. GL RGB unsigned byte, and then you give the texture input, which is wood texture. The following lines are parameters which say how the texture map is accessed, which is essentially that you have a texture map at a certain resolution, but when you map it onto the object geometry, you will end up either magnifying or expanding the texture map, or minifying or reducing the size of the texture map. The question is, how do you handle this? And do you do linear interpolation for magnification? Do you just take the nearest point? And in this case, we've specified GL linear for both the magnification and minimization filters. Now, one could also use mid maps, which are texture maps at a variety of different resolutions, from the finest resolution to the coarsest resolution. And in this case, you would specify GL mipmap linear, which does bilinear filtering on the texture map, but also linear filtering of mipmap levels. And that is the most expensive trilinear filtering. Finally, we have these two parameters, which is what happens if you go beyond the range of 0 to 1 in S and T. 
Do you plan to one and zero, or do you repeat and do you loop around that 1.5 comes back to 0 0.5? In order to use texture maps in the shader, we need to define a sampler. That's what GLN text sampler is doing. It is getting the location from the program of this text variable. And you initially set it to zero, which could also be the value of GL texture zero. So it's saying which texture map, if we have several, should I look up? And then we set is text to the GL get uniform location of the is text command in the program. And that will be set appropriately. Let's now talk about drawing with texture. To add a function draw with texture, which will be used for the floor, which is similar to draw object, except now it takes as an input the texture. So we first bind the texture 2D to the texture. You bind the vertex array for the object, and now you just draw it. So the only thing that's different is that you're binding this texture corresponding to the texture variable. Here are the final steps for drawing. The vertex shader is just passing on the texture coordinates to the fragment shader. Notice that layout location 2 is where the texture coordinates come in. Those are a vec2. They're just s and t coordinates. The output from this will be the texture coordinates going into the shader, fragment shader, just like positions and normals. There is the sysTex. And now let's look at the main routine. You're doing projection times model view as before. You set my normal and my vertex for the fragment shader. You set text coord initially to 0, 0, which is a default value to prevent errors. And if texturing is turned on, if it's text not equal to 0, then you simply set it to the input texture coordinates that you receive. So it's just passing on the texture coordinates to the fragment shader. Notice that the OpenGL rasterization hardware will interpolate texture coordinates between the vertices, and so each pixel will get the correct interpolated texture coordinate. The fragment shader in this case is very simple, although it can be a more complex blend. So it takes this uniform 2D sampler text, this is text command, and it simply says if is text is greater than zero, then the fragment color will be given by this texture of text and text coordinate. That is the relevant part of the fragment shader for texturing. Of course, they will also do other commands for lighting if we are not texturing. And of course, this can be a more complicated blend. You could do the standard lighting calculation, modulate with the texture. But in this case, we are just looking up and using the texture map directly. Going back to our program, I can toggle between the texture, no texturing and texturing. I can move back and forth. And I have my scene now with my floor, pillars, teapots with texturing. 